Hi everyone, in this video, let us go into the deep dive of Spark on Kubernetes or Amazon EKS. Let's get started. The agenda for this entire series would be, let us first understand what exactly is Spark and then we will see why Kubernetes or Amazon EKS is the right platform for data processing. And let us give some overview about the data and EKS project. And we will also look into some of the open source data platforms on Kubernetes or Amazon EKS. Then we will see some of the best practices with respect to designing the Spark workloads at scale on Amazon EKS. So what exactly Apache Spark? It is a unified engine for large scale data analytics. So the definition, official definition from the Spark web pages, it's a multi-language engine for executing data engineering, data science and machine learning on a single node or a multi-node clusters. Let us look at the, some of the core design principles or the tenets on which the Spark is built. The first one is simplicity in terms of leveraging the Spark functionality for the developers in their workflows. It has to be very simple, the API and the naming convention. And it has to be fast with respect to executing the queries or it could be the processing. It could be machine learning or data analytics workloads. Various tasks has to be run very fast. And then it has to be scalable. Scaling from one node to thousands of nodes in a short span of time is another important criteria for Spark. And the last one is unified, which means it has to interoperate with multiple frameworks, APIs and data sources and so on and so forth. Now let us understand the key features of Spark. The first one is batch or streaming data. So basically Spark unifies the processing of data in batches as well as the real-time streaming use cases. So you can leverage your preferred languages. It could be Python, SQL, Scala, uh, Java, or R. Any one of these languages you can leverage for batch and streaming workloads. The second use case is SQL analytics. You can run very fast and distributed ANSI SQL queries, either for dashboarding purposes or hardware queries. And Spark runs very fast compared to most of the data warehousing systems. And the third one is data science at scale. Spark allows to perform exploratory data analysis, that is EDA on a petabyte scale. And this is without the need for downsampling. One more use case is machine learning. You can use Spark to train machine learning models in clusters of thousands of nodes in a fault tolerant manner. Let us understand the Apache Spark architecture in detail. The first one, there is a master node. This is where the driver program runs. The purpose of this program is to coordinate the Spark workloads which are running as independent processes across the worker nodes in the cluster. And all of these are coordinated by the Spark context object. Next, there is a worker node. This is where the executor runs. Executor is set up process which will run the competitions and also store the data for the applications. The driver program sends the Spark application code. This could be a jar file or Python files. And finally, the Spark context object will send the set of tasks to be completed by each of the executor on the respective nodes. We can have multiple Spark executors running on different nodes in the cluster. So if you look at this diagram, what we spoke about so far is the workload coordination. But the first question we need to ask is, how are these nodes or the machines getting managed in the first place? So how are they getting registered into the cluster? Spark itself does not do it. So for that, we have something called a cluster manager. So let us spend some time on discussing about what cluster manager is. 
cluster manager provides the orchestration of the master node and the worker nodes based on the platform on which it is deployed. Let us look at the high level diagram of the Spark architectures. First, we have the Spark core. This is a primary engine. And then we have multiple modules. One of them is Spark SQL. Then the second one is Spark Streaming. We will discuss each of these modules in detail. Then one more is Spark MLlib. And the fourth one is Spark Graphics. So these are the set of modules that can be used in the Spark applications. And with respect to the cluster manager that we discussed earlier, Spark provides multiple options in this case. The first one is a standalone, which is basically inbuilt into the Spark itself. And the second one is the Hadoop Yarn, which is a popular resource manager. And one more is the Mesos. And the fourth one is the Kubernetes, which got added sometime back in 2018 in Spark 2.3. Let us discuss each of the modules which Spark provides. One of the modules is Spark SQL. This is a Spark module with the structured data processing. So one of the features it provides is the integration of SQL queries into the Spark programs. So that means Spark allows you to query the structured data inside the Spark programs. We can use the SQL queries or the familiar data frame APIs and the language supported are the Java, Scala, Python and R. So another feature is the unified data access to multiple data sources. For example, you can connect to any data source in a similar way. So the data frames and the SQL provides a common way to access many data sources. For example, it could be Hive, Avro, Parquet, ORC, JSON and JDBC. Another feature is Hive integration. You can run SQL or HiveQL queries on the existing data warehouses. Spark also allows to connect the industry standard JDBC or ODBC. The next module is a Spark streaming. Spark Structured Streaming makes it very easy to build streaming application and the pipelines with the same and familiar Spark APIs. And one of the features is the ease of use. Spark abstracts many complex streaming concepts, for example, incremental processing, checkpointing, and watermarks, etc., so that the developers can focus on building the applications than looking at the complexity of these concepts. Another feature is the unified batch and the streaming APIs. Spark allows to use the same API, for example, data frame and the data sets for different use cases, for example, batch and the streaming APIs. That means the developers do not have to maintain two different tech stacks for batch and streaming APIs. One more module is Spark ML Lib. It is a scalable machine learning library. It supports easy of use, which means many languages are supported. For example, Java, Python, Scala, R and Hadoop data sources. It provides a high performance and quality algorithms. For example, for one of the algorithm called iterative computation, Spark does 100x better than the typical Hadoop MapReduce operation. Like we discussed earlier, Spark runs in multiple places. For example, it can be a standalone or an EC2, Hadoop cluster, Mesos or Kubernetes. Another module is the Spark Graphics. It is a module for graphs and a graph parallel computation. One of the feature it provides the flexibility. It seamlessly works with both graphs and the graph collections. Another important feature in this module is the speed. Graphics competes on performance with one of the fastest graph systems out there 
while still retaining the graphs, uh, the sparks flexibility and fault tolerance and the easy of use. It also provides a rich library of growing graph algorithms. Let us look at some more concepts, for example, data sets. Data set is a distributed collection of data across worker nodes. And data sets are typically constructed from JVM objects and manipulated using functional transformations such as map and filters. The next one is data frame. Data set is organized into named columns, which is similar to a table in a relational database. And data frame can be constructed from many different sources. It could be structured data files, tables in have, or external databases or existing RDDs as well. Driver program provides a core functionality, typically runs the main function of the application. It runs different parallel operations in the Spark cluster. Let us look at one more concept called Resilient Distributed Dataset called RDD. It is one of the main Spark abstraction. It is a collection of elements spread across different nodes and partitioned. And RDDs can be operated in parallel. And you can create the RDD in a, using a file in the Hadoop file system or take an existing Scala collection in driver program and do some transformations. And by default, RDDs are automatically recovered from the node failures. So they, were, they provide a lot of resiliency. And one more concept is called shared variables. It is another Spark abstraction, which is typically used in the parallel operations. Spark sends a copy of each of the variables used in various functions running on different executors. So there are two types of variables. One is a broadcast variable which is used to cache all the values in the memory on all the nodes. And the second type of the variables is the accumulated variables. These are used only for certain functions such as counters and the sums.